come on uh, on YouTube, then it's great if people leave comments. Uh, and so on. I, I noticed Morris on the rock said he was going to watch uh, this morning's uh, as well. And there's going to be quite a lot of uh, not, overlaps, not the right word. Let's say reinforcement of what we were saying uh, last week, because what we decided we're, we're going to do is we're looking at discipleship is, is have uh, similar topics, uh, both in Bosworth and here. Uh, and so though, if you look at the sermon afterwards, when you look at the sermon from last week, you'll think there was there'll hardly be a word said that's the same, but hopefully it, it reflects uh, just a different aspect of what I was wanting to say there. So, uh, and I should have put this on as well, shouldn't I? Yeah. I'll speak into this one. Yeah. So, as you can see, there's not many things on the list this week because uh, it's half term, it's bank holiday, all those sorts of things. But if you can, so it's a great opportunity of uh, joining in the one thing that we put down as uh, being able to join together in, which is, uh, is home group. Uh, and just as, as a way of uh, starting us off thinking, um, I wonder if I can give you a challenge. Why do we call it a home group? I think, well, that's pretty obvious. But anyway, we'll maybe get a chance uh, in a minute or two to, to uh, ask you that again. Let me see. The other thing to say is that each of the songs today are uh, being played by a, a group of young people from, I think it's called Watch It, W-A-T-C-H-E-T, -E Watch It Baptist Church in Somerset. Uh, and uh, just as I was preparing and thinking of songs that we could use, uh, I thought it was lovely to have them all played by uh, one group of people. And um, uh, in a sense, have them here leading worship. Uh, they are all youngsters, so their musicianship is probably not absolutely perfect. Uh, and uh, they've done marvelous things to record themselves all together during lockout. Uh, so we'll make some allowances because certainly I couldn't do as well as they've, they've been doing. But it's great to have an enthusiastic group of young people leading us in worship, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to, to start, um, as I say, we're going to be looking at true discipleship. And today's title will be uh, Leading People in the Hope and Mercy of Jesus. Um, so with that in mind, we come to our call to worship, which is obviously, I say, the plain text, and then all together we'll say the bold text together. Is that okay? Even youth grew tired and weary, and young men stumbled and fall. But those who hope in the Lord... They will run and not grow weary. Almighty God, we place our trust in you today. Fill us with your power as we worship you so that we might be equipped to do your work. So today uh, is going to be about being hopeful uh, and to say thank you to God for what's happening right now. Uh, and as we look out, we can see that uh, the Father has things planned for us. The Holy Spirit leads us to, to whom he would uh, in Jesus' name, uh, and Jesus himself will introduce us. But to know where we're going, we need to reflect on where we've come from. And so we'll have some examples to reflect on and help us remember as we come to prayer, some recent examples and prompts that you hopefully recognize. So as I said, um, we're going to have these young people from Watch It Baptist Church as the leaders in singing The Lion and the Lamb, uh, and we'll hear from them now.
the midst of that, we have these words. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord God Almighty? Father God, as we reflect on these words that are from Scripture, that there is no one or no thing that can stand before you. We take solace in all the good things that have happened uh, in recent times. Or as we think about places around the world, we'll be seeing some of the fantastic things you've done over recent uh, years. And we ask that you would just bring those to mind and give us a real heart of praise and worship this day. Amen. Chris. Reading from 1 Peter 1, <clears throat> verses 3 to 15. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though far, refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the gold of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you, when they spoke of the things that had now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit, sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled, set your hope fully on the grace to be given you, when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you have had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. So we're going to join again with the young people from, from Wichita, and they're going to lead us in a song of hope. It's called Living Hope. Uh, and this time we meet a lot more of them. So um, in terms of singing, uh, we are allowed to have somebody lead from the front, but since I didn't introduce that before, I thought I won't sing up. So I will do it just that. But if anybody else would like to take a shot at leading uh, singing, then you're most welcome. You can do it in one or two, I think probably a couple would be fine for us just now. So just let us know. Uh, you don't need to do it. You can do it today if you want, by all means. But uh, uh, just let me know and we'll make sure that we can share that. So it's called Living Hope. Uh, and let's, I was going to say, let's sing together. Let's watch together and I'll sing.
and then through the darkness tore uh, through the shadows of my soul. Jesus Christ, my living hope, who would imagine, who could imagine so great a mercy? The King of Ages stepped down from glory, the cross has broken and forgiven. Father God, as we reflect again on the fact that you are indeed not just our hope, but our living hope, and that uh, Jesus Christ is the one who came to save, and he will not be defeated. Amen. So Jesus is our living hope, uh, and one of the ways we aim to set out is to do it through uh, BMS World Mission. Some of you might remember that five years ago or so, uh, back in 2015 it was, uh, they came up with a, a strategy uh, of, uh, of seeing a higher goal, that's or the highest goal is what they termed their strategy. And they aim to see one million lives transformed in five years. And that seemed a really ambitious target. It's difficult to capture visions on, on a slide. Uh, and uh, I, I quite like numbers, so I'm okay with things like this, but I think some people look at it just, it just melds into, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what, but, you know, if you, if you look at the detail of it, there's all sorts of different ministries, there's seven different ministries, there's uh, targets and details of what they're hoping to do, but the big picture is, could they reach a million people in that time? I wonder if it caught your imagination or whether you thought well it's just something that's happening somewhere else there's a there's a phrase that bms use when they're talking to churches and they say uh they say you are bms because bms although it's, it's doing work elsewhere is made up of all of us who support it uh, and uh, so i wonder how we've done well, obviously i'm going to tell you how we've done and it says you did it so let's hear from them uh, what's what's happening now there's going to be a lot of images there's going to be lots of countries there's going to be lots of ministries mentioned uh and what i'd I just like everybody to do is just to ask well lord what, what would you say to me and maybe one country or, or one or two countries uh, uh, or a ministry a, a situation that's that's mentioned and when we come to prayer a bit later on just allow that to be in your mind and we'll see what we do with that when we get there uh, a lot of these things we've prayed about and given towards over the past nearly three years that we've been here. So here we go.
So there's an awful lot of information, a lot of uh, images, a lot of, uh, of <coughs> situations for us to be praying about, that's for sure. Uh, I wonder if anything really struck you. I'll just, I won't ask the rest of you, but I'll just ask Kylie this bit. Did anything hit you? Yeah, it was the, uh, well, two things. The number of babies that were taken to one of them had, and the fact that one teacher was trained and then it impacted um, another So do you, know who the, do you know who that was talking about? Yeah. In, in Nepal, that's at Anne, Anne Townsend. Oh, was it? Yeah. So our friends that we've known for 35 years went to Nepal aged be kind let's say she was 71 she's maybe yeah, a bit well no she's a, it's, it's a few years ago now but anyway she let's say in her mid-70s she went out to nepal uh, as a missionary uh, and uh, she's a, a teacher and she's the one that was that's mentioned in that and, and it really strikes you doesn't it you know we're talking about and by the way it wasn't 1 million but 1.3 million people that have had a significant impact on their lives by all those different things that have happened. It's been truly enormous. It wouldn't be possible without people like yourselves. Um, it's an incredibly uh, powerful and, and far-reaching organization, but they are, are really special folks. Uh, and it's good to say, I know that person. So there we go. But perhaps uh, I thought we'll share something which is a little bit more uh, intimate, if you like, because some of us like to, you know, we can relate to one person, whereas 1.3 million just seems impossible, doesn't it? Uh, and so this is our, our second visit. Is um, it's it was actually introduced by a chap called Jez, who's the uh, Christian AIDS um, representative for the East Midlands. You'll, you'll hear him a little bit at the end. Uh, and uh, this is uh, a visit to Florence, who's in Kenya, and she's benefited from a simple dam that's been built with your help. Uh, and she's speaking in her own language, uh, obviously, and there'll be, there'll be subtitles. Hello, Would your help 
Florence and her community have built this water dam which has radically changed her life and the lives of many in the local community. A new help is to build more community dams and give Rose and many others access to water. As we think about the struggles we've faced over the last year, and as we think about Rose and Florence and those who are struggling to live with the impact of climate change, may we hold on to hope and not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will be. I edited it a bit badly there. Just to finish off what Jez was saying, it's from Galatians chapter six. Uh, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Uh, do, do you notice, I, I was really humbled as you listened to Florence and she spoke her prayers for us, isn't it? I'm grateful to you and I pray God's blessing on you that you may continue to prosper. And her prayers for her, uh, her, her uh, community are really simple, that there's peace for her children and that there's rain. You know, if you want to know how to pray, it's such a simple thing, isn't it? There are simple needs uh, and uh, and concerns for others. It, it's so simple. So we've got a time for open prayer. I know everybody always looks forward to that part of the uh, of the sessions when we're when we're doing this. But some things that you might not know about as as yet that will um, just enlarge on the things that we've heard so far. Uh, most of you were, were here when we had the uh, the session with the Baptist Assembly. Uh, and uh, I know that quite a few people got their phones out and were trying to give money to, to, the, uh, to the BMS appeal uh, for India. Or it's actually for India, uh, for the subcontinent, there'd be uh, for Nepal and for, uh, for Pakistan as well. But um, uh, most folk couldn't get through because there were obviously so many people giving at the time. Uh, it so happened uh, I was doing something for uh, another Baptist minister this week, um, a prayer thing, and he, his wife works for BMS and she was, she wasn't counting the money, but she was consolidating it and making sure, you know, what, what they're going to do. Uh, and they raised, this was by Wednesday, over £200,000, which is just phenomenal uh, amount. And when you think about it, even if we'd had 3,000 people going to the Baptist Assembly, which would be quite a lot, between two and 3,000, yeah, there's no way in the world that they would have raised 200,000. So God's using whatever we're going through at the minute to see uh, how we can help each other uh, and uh, see his kingdom come further afield. Um, I don't know, do we know how much we gave to, to Christian Aid? Yeah, is that? Okay, so just for a small fellowship hours, that's, you know, uh, all these things, when you add them up, uh, uh, it's a sign of, of generosity, uh, and, uh, and I'm sure that the Lord will bless folks through that. So, now we come to the time for prayer. So maybe there was a country that you saw, or a, a celebration over the past five years, or perhaps been inspired by the story from Florence and the work of Christian Aid. But just, uh, we'll take a few moments to say thank you. You might just say the name of a country or you might uh, expand on that a bit, but let's pray together. Lord, we just thank you for our friend Anne and for what's happened in Nepal. And we pray, we pray for those uh, teachers to uh, teach those over 3 million children there. Amen. Our love and sister Cynthia in my lives, these are the contacts that I had there a few years ago and we just have had them too. Uh, I really see the fighting and <coughs> the joy that's happening there and see what God does with them. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
father and great grandfather and sister from Sri Lanka and Australia came in, not suffered too bad in their fishing industry. Mm. We did just like that. In a world that can be hostile, your mediating love builds a path from loneliness to community, from antagonism to cooperation. In a world that can appear purposeless, your vitality shouts out a mighty yes to life and declares the source of all living to be the one from whom you proceed, the father and mother, creator and lover of all. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus. We promised your coming, Holy Spirit. The Lord, prayer spoken and unspoken, we leave in your hands. Amen. So we've got a, a chance of uh, joining with those young folks again as we celebrate the Lord's work, work throughout the world, all over the earth. We meet the, these young folks that lead us in You Never Let Go.
and so on. We're going to continue to look at uh, true discipleship uh, and focus on the question, what does it mean to be a true disciple? Uh, and each week, uh, I think it's important to start with this quote, and I'll just restate it. Uh, true discipleship involves deep relationships. Jesus didn't simply lead a weekly Bible study. He lived a life with his disciples and taught through actions as well as words. Remember I said at the start, um, I wonder why we call it home group. Anybody want to suggest the reason why we call it a home group? It's held in people's homes. That's, that's a very good point, John. Or it might, sometimes it's got a radical name like a house group. You know, so you have a home group, a house group. Yeah. But here it talks about a Bible study. Is, is that quite the same? Or what about a prayer meeting? Uh, I know they're, they're, when we gather together in small groups, quite often we have these, uh, these names that pretty much do what it says on the tin, doesn't it? But discipleship, as we've been exploring it, isn't, it is about what we do in our homes, of course it is, but it's about far, far more. So if we were having discipleship groups, if we were having uh, groups that were about being disciples, what might you call them? Give me a suggestion. No right answers, no wrong answers, rather. Action groups. Action, yeah. And else? Sharing. Sharing, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Get any of those? Make it three. Three is a nice round number. The trend, one of the, one of the trends I've noticed in churches these days is to call them life groups. I, I like that actually, because sharing and actually, you know, it's about what, what we're going to do with life, but it's about living as a community, isn't it? And so I, I, I've Maybe we'll explore that as a possibility. What should we, what we call ourselves determines pretty much what we might do, or it limits us. So we can sometimes choose a name that stops us doing certain things. The name men's group comes to mind for some reason. <laughs> but it is more than studying the Bible. Studying the Bible, but in the context of us be, being disciples of Jesus Christ. Uh, and of course, the, the, the sharing and the, uh, the, the, the home part is, of course, included in, in that sense of, of, um, of it being life together as a community. So when we looked at uh, the first time we looked at true discipleship, we came up with these four headings, four motifs, if you like, of discipleship. And if uh, we're looking for true discipleship, we should see something of each of these uh, in what we're doing. Uh, and uh, this week we're focusing more on the second one, lead uh, people to the hope and mercy of Jesus. Last week uh, at Bosworth, being Pentecost, we uh, focused on the fact that we weren't doing this, or we shouldn't be doing this on our own. It's doing it with the Holy Spirit, Jesus sent his Holy Spirit, promised his Holy Spirit to, um, to enable us, uh, to uh, empower us in, in what we're doing. But this week, uh, we'll be looking at it from a slightly different perspective. Um, if you use YouTube at all, then do go back and have a look at what we said last week, because I think it will be different sides of the same coin, or hope it is. And so we heard from uh, Peter's first letter uh, how central hope is to discipleship. He says at the beginning of the passage, a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead uh, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. And Peter concludes our passage with a challenge about hope. He says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for your hope that you have. Uh, but do this with gentleness and respect. Do this with gentleness and respect. You know, hope itself is central to uh, everyone's health and well-being. 
Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you a, a clip. I'll tell you where it came from. Uh, it won't be really obvious to start, but you can see the start. We left a chalkboard outside as students arrived at school. an advert for a school in America uh, and uh, it really struck me that they, they really do ask the right question don't they? Uh, I wonder what would happen if we put that whiteboard outside uh, our class what would you what would you start with when you were crossing the uh, crossing the threshold what are what is what are your hopes we could see the chances or we would be prepared to give an answer everyone who asked you to give a reason for the hope you had to do with this gap in the, in the sky. So think about what that might be. Peter tells us that it's a living hope. To Christians, it's a living hope. In our form of church, uh, we translate the word hope sometimes as being testimony. Uh, and so I wondered what you might think testimony is all about. So this is another opportunity to do a bit of shouting out. Um, uh, and uh, how would you explain testimony? I'm, I'm not asking you to give your testimony just now, but uh, uh, what would you say it's about? Anybody share a thought? Yeah. Okay. 
declaring a sense of purpose. I'm assuming everybody hears all these now. I think we're that is loud enough, isn't it? Making implicit explicit. <clears throat> I'm not sure what you're implying there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, I wrote down a few beforehand. We'll see if, uh, if I've captured some of the things that you've said. Bearing witness to, so that's important, you know, when you give testimony in court, that's what you're doing. Your last will and, that's your testimony, is, you know, what, what's that about? Your experience, we heard. Uh, Although I didn't ask you to say how you felt about it, you know, I think some people would say it's, it's quite daunting to have the, the prospect of uh, giving your testimony. Uh, at the other extreme, it's, it's simply sharing our story, whether it's this week, whether it's our experience of become, coming to faith. Um, it tends to be public, public statement of faith, uh, relating to what you've seen and done. And, and in summary, telling your story. Testimony is about telling your story. Uh, and that's what Peter tells us to do. Uh, our hope is related to our story because our story opens the door to what, uh, what um, our hope is. It's not based in some philosophical view of life but rather on our practice and experience of life. So I need some volunteers for this next bit. <laughs> I can say Jim will volunteer. Maybe, so great, up we come, Jim. Uh, I'd be good if we get, if we, anybody else would like to volunteer? Are, are, you, are you okay with standing for a minute or two? Yeah, okay. excellent, All right? <laughs> Okay, now how are we going to do this? I just realized that I've not got. Um, are you okay with using box of matches? Yeah. yeah, one after the other. We can use you, wash your hands afterwards, right? Yeah, we could get rid anybody else wants to come up? You can wait, see what, they, what they're going to have to do. It's so brave. Um, so here's what we're going to do. It's obviously related to lighting a match, yeah? Um, what did I do? And here we have, so as everybody sees it. In the time it takes for a match to burn out, tell us, why do you come to church? Or, or in addition, what do you believe about God? All right. So that's a bit of a challenge, isn't it? Do, do, do your best. <laughs> so the, the challenge you bit might be getting it to light, actually, since we haven't checked this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, excellent. All right. I, I come to church to be refreshed in my in my sense of purpose, um, and also to listen to Jim because I value what he has got to say and to share. <laughs> okay, right. We'll kind okay, that is having since set fire to these. Are we okay, Jim? Yeah, we're yes. all right. Yeah. Oh. Oh my well done. Yeah. That deserves a round of applause. Doesn't it? <laughs> right, June. Do you want to have a shot? Yeah. That's the right side, yeah. That's like that box. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, oh, right. Um, I come to church to strengthen my faith, uh, to be with others who feel the same, uh, to feel secure and happy, and to feel close to God. <laughs> 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 Anybody else want to have a shot? You're welcome. Are well, you two going to go and sit down? And, uh, so I think uh, June as well. A uh, round of applause. Yeah. You know, did you have a sense of foreboding, thinking, what's he going to ask us to do? You, you both volunteered without even asking anything about what you were going to have to do. I uh, don't know if that's sensible, personally, but yeah. And when you're watching, of course, we would do this with kids and, and everybody watches the match, you know. 
But roughly speaking, that's how much time somebody will give you to see whether they want to hear more. Yeah? And there's something about the amount of time we have. You know, we've said discipleship uh, is about uh, building up relationships. But there is the this, this strange time when people will say, I'm, I'm willing to listen to you. I was struck. Did you like that? Did you like that? I was struck when Shane Claiborne's suggestion uh, that uh, the plural of disciple is church. Uh, and I come to church to meet other disciples. So thanks to those that, that came up. If anybody else wants to have a shot at it, that's great. I, I would strongly recommend it. Do it at, at home. Uh, that you light a match. Sometimes maybe a long one of the big ones that I was going to bring our long matches, but I forgot to, to bring them. Uh, and it gives you a little bit longer. Uh, and just practice. Like, I wonder what I would say to somebody. Because most people, when they suddenly are confronted with somebody that might ask them, well, well why do you go to church? What do you believe? They think, oh, what, what they say? Because we, we haven't rehearsed it. We, we don't know what to say. Uh, and most of us aren't articulate enough or, or, or confident enough to just launch into uh, something about about faith or yeah. Um, and so just actually rehearsing it, whether you do it with a match or not, is is not maybe the point. I, I've shared with you in the past that. Um, there's a question that's that the question of why do you come to church was asked of Nicky Gumbel, the originator of Alpha, and he suggested there are many reasons why people come to church, but there's only one reason why they stay, and the reason they stay is because they make friends. Being Christians, we come up with another name for that and we call it fellowship. But I think that's a really powerful insight. One of the strengths, one of the strengths of meeting together online at a given time, I think, has been the sense of being together even when we're apart. Yeah, because a lot of churches, what they've done is put things on YouTube and then everybody watches it whenever people want to watch it. But there's something about saying we're joining in together. And it obviously isn't the same, but there's a sense of it. And it gives us uh, that opening to think, well, what is it? that we're doing when we come together. And one of the things about coming together and sharing is, is to share each other's, uh, to share each other's burdens and joys. I don't know if you can see the two hands that are hand in hand there, but they're made up uh, of words. And one of the hands, dark colored one, is made up of things that say things like, I understand, don't worry. I'm here to help. Uh, and the other hand that's in red is, is with comments of, of doubt and concern and worry. Sharing hope is at the heart of discipleship. Peter's letter was written to Christians who were undergoing persecution. Uh, they were suffering enormously in I think maybe five different parts of Asia Minor. And he says, remember your hope in the midst of your suffering. We're reminded in that letter of the, of the undeserved and unreserved mercy that we've received. And we're called to share it. We don't have to share it in some theological manner but rather our authentic story. People care about your story. Today, lots of things are, are changing. One of the things that perhaps changes, you know, there's the, the downside of it is when people say, um, what's your truth? Yeah, uh, fake news is the, is the downside of that. But the upside of it is everybody's story is relevant. Everybody's story has got some validity. People won't say it doesn't matter because it's you. 
It matters because it's your story and people are willing to listen to it. One of the things that Eileen and I experienced when we did Alpha quite a lot was there were some people who had a remarkable story and you'd think everybody will be interested in them. Everybody's going to be interested in their story because it's spectacular. But actually, quite often people were really interested in the ordinary everyday story because that was their story and there was overlap. We can be attracted to see the spectacular, but when it comes to the nitty gritty things of life, when we hear somebody that's just like us, that's something we're interested in. And so our story, which points to our hope, is there one particular thing that comes to mind, a good friend who was in a, a large organization where they were making redundancies and he was really quite calm about it. And everybody else was really worried. It was in the 1980s and there were a lot of people being made redundant. Uh, and people asked him, well, why are you so calm? And he was able to share because he knew that Jesus had a plan for him and whatever happened, it, that they would be okay. What's God's plan for you? And what hope has he shown you? Each day, as we ask the Lord to bring somebody across our path, that we might ask, how are you? Spend time listening to, because it's not just about us getting through our testimony quickly. It's about listening to the other person's story. And with the overlap, with the bridge that's formed, that we can introduce them to Jesus. Just take time to think, I wonder who it is that God's bringing across my path. We asked at the beginning of the day, where are you leading me? What are you leading me into? And to whom would you lead me to? And at that point, we can see what our story should be. So let's give thanks for all the good things that we've, that we've heard about today. Uh, and uh, we've looked at on the big scale, on the personal scale, uh, but we can also think about the local scale as well. Uh, and in our prayers, we'll include uh, thoughts of our own local community. So we're going to do that as we listen to a prayer by Jez, the, uh, the chap from uh, Christian Aid. It's a really beautiful uh, prayer by a literal babbling brook. The world is full of beauty and brokenness. Let us hold on to hope. We are so often reminded of the injustice, pain, and inequality in the world, a system that keeps us in poverty. We mourn the recklessness with which we have treated the earth, creation groaning and longing for healing. All over the world, people made in the image of God are treated with a lack of dignity, facing conflict, health inequality, and humanitarian disasters. And yet, we hope. The people of God cry out in sadness and lament, raging at the injustice we see in the world. And yet, the hope is towards a kingdom where all things will be made new. God, whose love knows no borders, give us grace and courage to respond to this strife and oppression. Open our eyes to see you in the troubled places of your world. Open our arms to embrace our sisters and brothers enduring loss and hardship. We pray for our world, in the pain of the tortured and the loneliness of the refugee, in the arrogance of the strong and the security of the powerful. Turn us again, Lord, to drink the cup of salvation, that we may die to ourselves and live for you. May we put our trust and hope in you afresh, when you renew our strength, and help us soar on wings like eagles, running and not growing weary, walking and not getting faint. May we be sword of life, reflecting your love, justice, generosity, and kindness. To yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we're going to finish with a blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you.
May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen.